So as the title of this video implies, this is a Rick and Morty decal tutorial. So what I did for this is I just grabbed an image of them from Google to use. And we're gonna start by removing the background. I just wanna give you a quick tip. If you're seeing that splotchiness there when you preview your image, you're gonna to want to go under the magic wand tool to reduce colors feature. And bringing down that number to a lower number will discolor your image. But for removing the background, it will actually allow for a smoother image. It won't affect your decal at all. So we're gonna start by making this the black layer, which is our base layer. And make sure you're saving it as a cut image. You can add tags if you want. It will be easier to find in the end or if you're searching this at all. So I highly recommend doing that. I'm not going to for this example. And as you can see here, I went about this a little bit of a different way, kind of an inverted way. So we're gonna see how this turns out. Um, I just did this for time purposes. You can create the layers like normal if you want, but this is just a little experiment on my end. So we're gonna get right into the white layer now. As you just saw, I created the blue layer, but we're just removing all the pieces that are white currently. So instead of erasing everything else like you typically would, we're just getting rid of everything that is the color of the layer we are creating. So, Overall, I should end up with about seven layers by the end of this, I believe. Um, again, you do not have to do it like this whole inverted way. You can just delete everything else except, for example, you can delete everything else except the skin color. So it will line up and you can create your image before actually cutting it out. Make sure you're always saving these as a cut image if you plan on cutting them into a decal, just as a reminder. Here's a quick example I wanna show you also. So for this pink layer here, this is a color tolerance example. So I set it to two. See, it doesn't really erase anything at all, but if you set it up to 70, it reads everything as just one shade of pink. Whereas the lower it is, it will read it as like, multiple different shades. So it might be like, oh, this is pastel pink. This is hot pink. This is whatever, fuchsia, you know? So the higher the t color tolerance, the more it's just like, oh, this is pink. We're going to remove this. So moving forward, you also see that I erased quite a bit of this layer. You can do that just to save vinyl. I'm actually going to do it on this yellow layer as well. Um, you don't have to, but this won't affect the sizing of your decal at all. So I just re recommend it from a saving material standpoint. Also moving on. So we have the green layer and the brown layer left as far as our seven, eight layers go, however many we have here. Um, also, I want to say this inverted way I really, really do not recommend doing it because you can't really view your decal in the Cricut Design Space ahead of time due to this because you don't have your typical shapes. So you can't line everything up ahead of time. And I don't know if that matters to you, but I really like being able to see how my decal is going to turn out before I end up cutting it. But as you can see here, we just have this mess going. Also, what you need to do before you cut it out is you need to color code this stuff because if you don't, it's all going to cut in one layer. Whereas if you have it all separate, then it will divide up into mats for you, as you can see on the left hand side. So I cut everything out and I'm going to show you a preview here in a second of what my decal turned out. There it is. So if you want to, you can go ahead and look at my other video and see how I ended up putting this all together.